At this moment, I'd like to take you to the knowledge of theocracy. Praise Yahweh. Glory to Yahweh. You can write that word down. T-H-E O-C-R-A-C-Y Theocracy. Theocracy. This is also a form of government that we, the Hebrew Israelites, the nation of Israel, and the tribe of Judah were under historically. There are four types of government that we were under, and they are patriarchal, theocracy, and the next time I teach you on government, it will be on the government by judges, and the last form of government that we have in our Bible I will teach you on is the monarchy, monarchy, M-O-N-A-R-C-H-Y. So those are the four forms of government that we have in our Bible, that's in our history, that we have lived under. Yahweh being the same yesterday, today, and forever, then one of these forms of government is the way we're going to live forever. Three of these forms of government are by man, by men. The same as every form of government on earth today is by men. There's only one form of government that is being brought back today, and that's the form I'm bringing back. It is a historical precedent for it called theocracy. That's the only form of government where there will be peace forever, prosperity forever, and wisdom forever, everything forever. Life eternal is under theocracy. Now, theocracy is where Yahweh was the direct ruler of his people. Theocracy is where Yahweh is the direct ruler of his people. Yahweh himself is the direct ruler. Whether his body is with you for a week or a month, and you don't see him again for a month or a year or 10 years, he is still the only ruler. And he, sho he shows that he has the power to appear and disappear and everything stay in motion through his creation. Yahweh doesn't have to stay around and watch the bugs to make sure they keep coming at us. See, he has set that cycle of life in motion that even if you use insecticide and pesticides, it stops some, but they keep coming back. And what was poison to an insect last year, he takes it as a fruit cocktail this year. <laughs> it's called he gets immune, immune. Yahweh has fixed them where if you bring a poison against them, it will kill out a great deal of them, but the eggs that are laid will have some of that poison in them so that that poison that's within that new egg that's coming from the insect, it becomes a part of his genes and chromosomes. <laughs> so when he come back, he's mean. So when you shoot that other stuff on him again, he say, I like that. Bring me some more. <laughs> He'd be lonely without it. That's how incredible Yahweh is. The only, only thing that he created that always needs him is us. <laughs> without Yahweh, we are truly like sheep without a shepherd. And we will wander from hill to hill.
Praise Yahweh. That's why Yahweh lists us as sheep in the Bible. He said, my sheep are men. Where? Turn to Ezekiel 34, 31. My sheep are men. Why in the world would Yahweh classify us along with sheep? Why would he compare us with sheep? Ezekiel 34, 31. Read. And ye, my flock, the flock of my pasture, are men, and I am your God, saith the Lord Yahweh. Why does Yahweh have to identify who he is? Simply because you don't know who Yahweh is unless he identifies himself. You don't know who I am because I look just like any other man to you. Yeah, well, what, do you what do you want me to look like? An eye in the center of my head? <laughs> Both of my ears on my chest? And my tit nipples on my ears? I mean, where my ears are? Is that what you want, a reversal? You want my lips to be, you know, where my navel is, then you'd be happy. See, if I look like that, you'd call me a freak. Man, a freak like that can't possibly be God, man. I mean, look at that. <laughs> he don't even look human, man. <laughs> so when God come looking just like you, the reason you have a problem is your mind has not been elevated. In order to recognize God, your mind has to be elevated. Otherwise, I look just like anybody else to you. I'm not God because I say I am. I'm God because I am. You can't deny that I'm God because you don't know who God is. You don't even know what God is. You haven't studied nothing about God. So how can you say I'm not God when you can't stand up and give me an hour's discourse on what the definition of God is? If you go and research God, do your research and go get encyclopedias and dictionaries and Bible dictionaries and look up the word God, then you could come and check me out and see, do I live up to all that God is? But if you don't know all that God is, you can't compare me, you can't judge me one way or the other. Because the facts are, you don't know you, God. I'm here to let you know that you are God. Psalms 82, 6. Read. I have said, ye are gods, and all of you are children of the Most High. Now, what do you have to say about that? Even you a God. You just a dumb God. <laughs> you just an ignorant God. Instead of being godly, you are a fool. God. <laughs> a blind, deaf, dumb, ignorant, and dead God. That's what's wrong with you. You still God, even though you're dead. Old fool God. Look at that old fool God. <laughs> even white people know you God. That you're just an old, dead fool, ignorant God. Why aren't you God? You didn't know you were God till I tell you. You may have heard somebody say, the black man is God. But you couldn't do anything with that because you didn't have the knowledge of God. Oh, hallelujah, Yahweh. Hallelujah. If anyone claimed to be God, he has to be able to defend it. Though I tell you that you are God, if you don't come into the knowledge of what God is and who God is, and how God is, 
you can't defend that. So I'm here to give you the knowledge of God. And if you believe on my name, I'll make you God because I'm the creator. I'm the creator of God. I make God. That's how powerful I am. That's why I'm the mighty God. Because I make God. That's my power. That proves I am the mighty God because I make you God. If you want to be God. Now, if you don't want to be God, that won't stop nobody else from being God. See, somebody here is God's. Have I not said, you are God? That's me talking. Don't you hear me? You think that's the Bible talking? That's me talking. I am the Bible. Everything in the Bible is about me. Every word in the Bible is me. All the dictionary is me. The reason you can't understand me, you didn't know the dictionary was the other half of me. See, the Bible is the spiritual part of me. Don't look at my chest. It's right here. The difference between you and me is right up here. If you had up here what I have up here, see, you could be God. You could be mighty. <laughs> You'd be rich like me. You wouldn't have to be jealous. You'd just be rich like me too. <laughs> see, you'd have power like I have power. See, I have power. All power and authority is in my hand. John 5, 27. Because I'm the son, the mighty God. Some people every now and then want to know if I'm God. Are y'all saying that man's God? Yeah, I'm God. I'm, I'm not just God either. Don't call me just God. You have to call me the mighty God. Don't insult me. If I was on your level, if I was just a man like you, then just all men would be doing what I'm doing. The reason you have to come listen to me is because I'm not ordinary. You don't go sit down and listen to no ordinary man for two or three hours. In fact, I got men dressing up in long robes like me means I'm unusual. I am unique. I'm out of the ordinary. Praise Yahweh. Yeah, ordinary men won't dress like me. He's like, how can I be an ordinary man? I'm the only man talking about Yahweh. I'm the only man that has the world now talking about Yahweh. That's not an ordinary man. I'm the only man that has Yahweh's name, the only true and living God, the ancient God, the God of Israel, on buses and trucks and cars. And we wear it on our chest and our forehead and all over us and all around, we just say praise Yahweh all day long. You can say what you want to say, but we say praise Yahweh. Ordinary men don't do that. Well, let's turn to uh, Deuteronomy 32, 39 and take a look at my power. <laughs> I have to teach you the fear of me. Then you can go tell people, say, you know, that's God down there, man. He got power over life and death. <laughs> right. You better believe it. The devil knows that. Deuteronomy chapter 32, 39. See now. See. <laughs> Open up your eyes and see now. <laughs> right now. That I even I am he. I'm being redundant twice. I. In case you didn't hear me, even I that's standing here talking to you. I am the one. I am he. And there is no God with me. I am God. There is no God with me to come. I am here. And I kill? Yes, I kill. And I make a line. And I wound. Then turn and heal you. 
Neither is there any that can deliver out of my hand. If I put you in my hand, you have, you're just in it. Does this let you know who I am? Well, Yahweh is the direct ruler of us now. That's what theocracy is all about. Now, let's go to uh, Exodus 19. No, I can't die. It doesn't matter if my body leave now. That my body is not me. I was God before I got a body. Don't you know that? The sun, I made the sun in the beginning of the earth. Don't you, don't you know that? I was God before I chose this body. Getting in the body didn't make, didn't make me God. I, was, I made the body and got in it. That's why I'm God. I chose the body I would get in. I made the womb. Then to prove I'm God, I got in it and, and stayed nine months like everybody else. Came out just like you. Went to the same ignorant school that you went to. But see, I didn't come out like you. See, I came out of school ignorant just like you. I was educationally retarded, <laughs> just like you. I may have been more educationally retarded than most of you, because you may have really believed in what you were doing. You know, you really may have believed in school. See, I never did. I never did believe in the white man's public school from a child. The day, I didn't believe in going the day I went. I didn't want to go to first grade. <laughs> Yahweh, I'm telling you the whole truth. I raised myself up to be God. I'm self-styled. I'm self-manifested. I incarnated into this body. I am not reincarnate. I am incarnate. I choose to come however I want to. I don't have to come this way again. I can come in another body. I come any way I want to. Stay long as I please. And you definitely can't kill me. I'll show you in the scripture that, you, that if you accept me, nobody can kill you. We don't know anything about ourselves because the white man did not teach you who you are. How can he rule over you telling you you God? He's through dealing when he do that. Huh? Matthew 10, 28, read. And fear not them which kill the body, but are not able to kill the soul, but rather fear him which is able to destroy both soul and body in hell. See, there's a distinction between the two. You have a body and you have a soul. Something that's, that's called a soul. I have a body. If you got a body and a soul, what you think I got? If you don't have to be afraid of the man that can kill your body that has no power over your soul, huh? You got to fear the man that has power over both. But see, you have never known what fear is. You are terrorized by Whitey and what he can do to your body. I'm not. What can happen to my body is irrelevant. I am life eternal. 
And if you believe on my name, then you'll have life eternal in you. That makes me God forever. I am the forever God. I'm the one that was always prophesied to come. How many now understand you got two parts? How many understand the white man has power over how many parts? One. Which part? Five. That's all any man got power over you on. Is what? Five. The body. What else do you have? Who got power over both? Yahweh. All right, Yahweh Ben Yahweh got power over both. I'm the son. I have all authority. John 5, 27. Read. And hath given him authority to execute judgment also, because he is the son of man. Praise Yahweh. Read verse 26 and see what, how my father now just alike. Read. For as the father hath life, in himself, so hath he given to the Son to have life in himself. See, there's only two that have life in themselves independently. The life in my Father Yahweh is independent. Then my Father turned around and gave me life in myself. Now, you can't read where he did that for nobody else. The only man that looks just like you, that's on the earth and has life in himself, just like the father Yahweh, is Yahweh ben Yahweh, his son. And nobody else has that. Now, I am so powerful and incredible that I can turn around and give you the power to become sons of Yahweh. But there's a condition. You cannot believe I'm an ordinary man just like you and get this. You'll have to admit that my name is not ordinary. You understand the mystery? Now let's look at verse 22. John 5:22 Read For the Father judgeth no man but hath committed all judgment unto the Son You got it Who has all judgment Yahweh ben Yahweh, Yahweh, ben Yahweh the Son Surely you have no no problem with me being the Son Well, my father has life in himself. I have life in myself. He has all authority. Then he turned around and gave me all authority. My father had all judgment. He had all judgment. Then he turned around and gave me all judgment. He must trust me a great deal to give up his all into my hands. He must be well pleased with my potential. Hmm? He must know I'm going to grow into a pretty good fella. A mighty good fellow. He must know that I'm going to grow into a mighty good grand fellow. And it looks like I am. Doesn't look like I'm disappointing anybody. Verse 23 tells you why Yahweh is doing this. That all men, how many men? All men. Should do what? Honor the Son, even as they honor the Father. You got that? You can't holler, I honor Yahweh the Father, see. No, Yahweh put what's in him in me. Then he turn around and tell you, you got to honor my son just like you honor me. And then tell you, if you try to honor him without honoring the son, what will happen? Read. He that honoreth not the son, honoreth not the father which hath sent him. 
So you have no choice but to honor me. When you honor me, who do you honor? Yahweh. You honor Yahweh. The same honor you give to my father, how much of it do I get? All, All of it. There it is. Glory. Glory. Yahweh sent me in his stead. See, I'm the son. And I come in my father's place. I come in his name. You in John 5, verse 43. Read. I am come in my father's name, and ye receive me not. If another shall come in his own name, him ye will receive. Praise Yahweh. Verse 41, I don't receive honor from men. I don't run around looking for honor from men. But you are ordered to honor me as you honor my father. How can you honor my father if you do not know him? So I spend all my time glorifying my father's name. That's why the name Yahweh is on the buses and the trucks and cars and on literature and everything that I do is Yahweh. See, false leaders come up with other names for toothpaste and stuff, you know? <laughs> I honor my father because you don't know him. You have not known of him. So when you see his name on everything, you become curious. And if you're really curious, you go pick up a dictionary, encyclopedia, and look up Y-A-H-W-E-H. You look up all of that. If you know what kind of letters those are, you'll ask somebody. What kind of letters say Hebrew? Then you go look up Hebrew, or you go look up the English. And guess what you'll discover? That that name is the God of the Hebrews. That that's the God of Israel. That name is the God of the Bible. And that the God of the Bible has a son. Now, the whole trick is to find out who he is. Everybody say he's coming, but you never did try to figure out how would I recognize him when he comes. So Whitey gave you a white picture, which is a false image. So you'd be looking for white folk. Well, look what happened. I come looking just like you. Isn't that a dilly? <laughs> Isn't that something? Praise Yahweh. Now, uh, back to uh, I John chapter 5, if you're still there. Verse 24. Verily, verily, truly, truly, I say unto all of you, he that heareth my words and believes on my Father Yahweh that has sent me, you have everlasting life. And you will not come into condemnation, but you are passed from death unto life. If you believe on my Father's name, you are not condemned, but you are passed. You will pass from your present death unto life. See, all that's a mystery to you if you're dead. How do I pass from? I thought I was alive. No, you are mentally dead. Spiritually dead. And if you just believe on my Father's name, you will pass from your present mental and spiritual death into life. A living man. Mm-hmm. Truly, truly, I say unto you. See, when this was written 1900 years ago, this was an allegory, but it's real now. I'm here speaking for myself. He was here speaking, telling you what I would say, and I'm showing you he didn't lie. Yahshua, the son of Joseph, who spoke these words 1900 years ago, 
I told him to speak them. He said, my father told me to say this to you. And so here I am saying it. Say, when he comes, this is what he will say. I say, you tell them what I'll say. Write it 1,900 years in advance that I'm going to say this. Now that's going to prove both of us are right. It's going to prove I told you to say it. And when I say it, it'll prove I am the one that would say it. Because I'm saying it. And I'm doing it. And I'm bringing you from death to life. How many witnesses do I have? That's the proof. That makes me the son. Because I'm doing the work. Now, if I couldn't do this work, then I couldn't be the man. But no other man is doing this work but me. I'm doing it. That makes me the man. Because a tree is known by the fruit it bears, and you are the fruit that I'm bearing from death to life. So I am that tree of life. Praise Yahweh. My father Yahweh told me I could tell you something now. I'm going to take you back to the garden and teach you something that I never told you. Now, you should have already seen this because what I'm about to tell you is in the book. But see, you didn't see it. See, back in the garden when the serpent Lucifer came and was talking to our black mother Eve and tempting her with what I had told them as the law, he came and said, go to Genesis 3. Now the serpent was more subtile than any beast of the field which Yahweh had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, hey woman, hath Yahweh said you shall not eat of every tree of the garden? Did Yahweh say that? How, how the devil know what Yahweh said? See how the devil is? You know what Yahweh says? Eve knew too. The woman said unto the servant, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, Yahweh hath said, You shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. That's what Yahweh told us. The serpent said to the woman, You shall not surely die. See, the devil's nature, his, his nature is to convince you that what Yahweh said will happen to you, will not happen to you if you follow him. So you got people leaving the temple or leaving whatever after they hear the word, go back out, because they believe what the serpent has said. She believed it in the end. Now, there was a tree in the midst of the garden which she was aware of that she should not touch. Then Yahweh said, there's a tree of life in the garden. You may freely eat thereof. G Genesis 2, verse 9. The tree of life also is in the midst of the garden. And there's also the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. So, you had two choices there. On one tree was two choices. On one tree was only one choice. One tree contained life only. The tree that the serpent wanted Eve to eat from had two fruits. The combination of good and evil. Both fruit was on the same tree. Then there was a tree that had only one kind of fruit, life. So Eve was in the garden to make two choices. The serpent was there and I was there. I was there as the tree of life and Lucifer was there as the tree of good and evil. We were both in the garden. And we both talked. He talked to Eve, but I used to walk with the man. 
Adam, in the cool of the evening, I used to walk and talk to him. So while I was walking with him, she was off talking to Satan. But I was there. And I'm here. And the same thing is available. I am the tree of life now. I was the tree of life then. And all I'm offering you is life eternal. If you believe on my father's name, you will have life eternal. If you have me, if you accept me and my government, I'm here bringing you the government of Yahweh, theocracy, where Yahweh himself rules you direct. Or are you going to go with Satan, the devil, who offers you a little good and a whole lot of bad? He shows you a little morality, which is a law he busts you with. Then he teaches you immorality, good and evil. Yes? Praise God. So after reading about Adam and Eve and Yahweh and the devil, you would say in your mind today, if I was back there and I had a choice to follow Satan, or to follow Yahweh, I would surely have chosen Yahweh. So now you have that choice today. Praise Yahweh. I knew you would choose because I chose you from the foundation of the world. Praise Yahweh. You should know that, that I would know how many would choose me because Lucifer didn't get everybody in heaven to go along with him. See, there were a lot of angels. He, he got a third to go with him. And that third was cast down with him to the earth. Huh? And we were here also as a temptation huh, for Satan as Job. So Satan has had 6,000 years to multiply himself into the majority. And I say, I'll come and get the minority and overrun the majority. That's why our enemies worry about my coming. Why else would they worry about a man being born from among the slaves, so-called black man of America, and I'm only prophesied to come? I prophesied I would only come and take 144,000 of you, but I'll take this 144,000 and chase all devils out of the world, all wicked, all immorality. I'm going to chase it out of the whole world. See, that makes me God. Only God can take 144,000 men and chase 4 billion, 600 million people off the planet and tell them up front. No conspiracy. Up front. I'm coming back. After my children have been in slavery 400 years, I'm coming back. I'm going to judge the white nation that you serve. I'm going to do it. Please, Yahweh. I was talking to your patriarchal father, Abraham, and I said, Abraham, know of a surety that your children, the tribe of Judah, will be in a strange land called America. And they will serve a strange white people whom their fathers have not known. They will serve them and these white people will afflict them with evil 400 years. But don't you worry about it, Abraham. I'm going myself. I'm going to judge the nation that afflict them. Then I'm going to deliver them and they'll all know and the world will know I am God, Yahweh. I do not lie. I'm right on time. Yes, You've been here 400 years. Yes, and they have afflicted you 400 years. Yes, and I'm judging them. Yes, and I'm here to take you out. Yes, and I shall take you out. Yes, I am successful. Because yes, I am success. Yes, Cannot fail. Yes, That's what makes me God. Yes, I'm delivering you with a mighty hand. A mighty stressed out arm. Praise Yahweh. See, if you knew of me, you'd be excited. 
If you knew all these scriptures and words, you'd be excited too. Because you recognize who's talking. The word is now flesh dwelling among us. Praise our way. Now I protect all my children. I'm the only man on earth that does not mistreat sisters. Husbands mistreat their wives. Praise our way. No, no sister could ever get mistreated by me. I'm doing for my women what no man and no nation has ever done for their women. Every nation on earth holds their women in subjugation to themselves. The men go to college. The women stay home and take care of babies and wash the clothes and take care of the house. The men are educated. The women are not. In all nations on the earth, it's the men that run the show. They call it a man's world. Even in America, women are fighting for women's rights. Even white women are not free. They're fighting for women's rights because they don't have rights. I'm the only man that raised my woman up equal with the man. You all are God, man and woman alike. When I give my sons 32 degrees, I give my daughters 32 degrees. I give my brothers 32 degrees, I give my sisters 32 degrees. When I give my brothers, when I raise my brothers perpendicular to the square, perpendicular to the earth, give them 90 degrees, I raise my sisters perpendicular to the earth, and I give them 90 degrees. That's not mistreatment, that's a blessing. Praise Yahweh. The wide open community, no secrets within Yahweh. I declare all things openly from the beginning, so they all treated the same. Mistreatment is when you make a woman a slave over an unjust man. Let an unjust man rule over a woman. That happened for 6,000 years because Eve broke the law and went against Yahweh, so you had to have a man over you. Have you loved it? How many women have not loved men ruling over you? Don't like it. How many admit men have not been a just ruler? All right, right. How many men admit you've been unjust yourself? Yeah, you know you've been wrong. You know you treated your woman wrong. Then you don't deserve to be her ruler today. You have to have theocracy now. That's me. The just ruler is on the scene. Hey, darling. So that ends my class on theocracy for tonight. Wonderful. I'm glad you're excited like that. <laughs>